गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम नागरत्न गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम नागरत्न डिपार्टमेंट कॉर्डिनेटर ऑफ जनरल एंड जी आई सर्जरी हियर वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस अबाउट हाइपर हाइड्रोसिस ट्रीटमेंट वी हैव डॉक्टर शिव प्रसाद लैप्रोस्कोपिक कंसल्टेंट एट एस्ट्रावी हॉस्पिटल हेलो सर वेलकम टू एट बी लाइफ सर डॉक्टर <coughs> What exactly mean that, sir? Hyperhidrosis means what? Well, uh, most of the young crowd are, you know, suffering from this disease called hyperhidrosis, which they are not uh, much of aware of that. And what is it exactly? Mm -hmm. Is excessive sweating in your palm region and axillary region without because of any exercise or climate change. I mean to say heat weather. So they tend to that is a normal reflex. So sweat. Let me tell you about this sweating reflex in our human body. So why do we, why do people sweat? This is the phenomenon where the uh, body tends to you know excrete uh, heat energy from the body. Non routinely when we walk or routine works, there won't be much of production of heat. But if you go on exercise or like you know uh, any anxiety or any workouts, they tend to sweat more and in reduce the. Uh, It excretes the heat, heat from the body. But in hyperhidrosis, what exactly happens? Though people are in the cold weather or sitting in an AC room, they tend to sweat because of the excessive sympathetic reflex. So this is called hyperhidrosis. So let me just tell you about one phenomenon where what happens in dogs and cats. I, I, you are, you know about it. They don't have much of. Uh, the sweating, uh, this one, glands in the skin. They all that they, they have to excrete uh, the heat from their body only through breathing. That's why whenever dog runs, they tend to pant more and more. But in human, we have we can uh, remove the heat from the body by breathing, by skin, and this is the urinary excretion also. So there are two types of uh, this hyperhidrosis. So one is called primary hyperhidrosis. Another one is primary hyperhidrosis is is an idiopathic. We don't know the cause. It it happens by birth and it is you know there is no secondary causes like secondary hyperhidrosis. It is most due to hyperthyroidism, diabetes or some some other underlying malignancy. So these two are the uh, hyperhidrosis classifications. Okay, sir. How patients will come with the symptoms? So what are the symptoms actually? How yeah. they will come to know this is an hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating? What complaints they will come with? Yeah, exactly. So these are quite commonly asked about. So we have uh, two types of uh, hyperhidrosis. One is palmar hyperhidrosis. Another one is a plantar. Most people do come to me in OPD with excessive sweating of arms in the sense more in hand. And axillary region, neck region, facial region, and foot region. So the consequences of this is because they develop uh, sort of like you know rashes, itching. All those are the secondary you know uh, features in uh, hyperhidrosis. But I would like to you know highlight something more than this because this itching or excessive <coughs> sweating. All those things we can manage, but the problem where uh, the you know lies is the what uh, this young crowd they develop is a social withdrawal symptoms because see they tend to hesitate to give shake hand and you know in social interaction like hugs and uh, shake hand they tend to hesitate because you know their hands is always wet yes. so it is difficult for them yes. and uh, I have seen like last I think last week couple of guys have come with the same. A problem where the, they are IT workers. They want to, you know, uh, you know about it. Uh, all the time they have to sit in front of the laptops and all. So they tend to sweat on the keyboard, and it's an awkward situation 
where they have to face this after yes. the so that's why even I think uh, I think last two months back one guy had come, young boy who had come with the difficulty. He had a real troublesome when he was writing exams, yes. like you know. So the whole paper was wet. So this is what the people uh, the this is what the hyperhidrosis is the problem more than the itching and rashes. The social withdrawal symptoms are the problematic. So you should address that. So by treating that, they will be very much benefited with this. We so heard that sir, for this hyperhidrosis, you operate surgeries actually. Yeah. Other than surgery, any alternate uh, therapies are there, sir, like lotion or yeah. ointment or something, tablets with we can yeah. because surgery suddenly means Correct. people will get scared <laughs> for this problem and we need to do surgery. Yeah. For That's that. True. Kind of hesitation. What are your that's true. That's true. We do have this conservative treatment for this hyperhidrosis other than surgical intervention. But the problem is these all are temporary. It is not the last long in the treatment. Where do where they come again with the recurrence of same? I think uh, in media if you search, a lot of people uh, have you know, posted about this uh, botox, iron prophoresis and uh, medical management like you know, lotion, tablet in the form. So, the, the, these conservative management or conventional management is a temporary phenomenon. But if you get a Botox done, initially you will feel better because it's an injecting material and it will block in the sweat gland, but it is not going to be a permanent one. So even recently they started iatrophoresis. What they do is they, you have to place your hand in a a uh, uh, small uh, current a media where it will not block the sweat gland. But that is also temporary and patients have come to me with getting to all this done and still they come with these uh, recurrent of hyperhidrosis. So, and of course there are some home remedies also. People do, you know, use brinjal and some baking soda and all. So that's going to hurt your skin and it's going to excoriate so that is not the good solution. So in surgical intervention, it is entirely different because we are uh, we divide the uh, structure with the nerves which are selectively supplied to the hand. So there is a definite uh, you know benefit than this uh, conventional therapy. Okay, sir. So what are the effects? Sir? Conservative treatment versus surgical management. How do you prefer, sir? Like percentage wise, which is more better? Yeah, yeah. I think I just told you this. So. Uh, more uh, this see the long term if you are talking about uh, this uh, surgical intervention is hundred percent because see I have been operating these kind of cases from last five years so I haven't had any patient who came with a difference the guys who have come from London UK USA uh, for a short duration of time so they were troubled with these disorders and it is you know operated and they are happy so whereas the guys who come to me who had undergone all these things, uh, the conventional therapy, they had a recurrence. So I hope you got the point because this has initially, if you do a survey, like you know, after procedure of Botox and the or medical therapy, you do get a hundred percent result. But this is not a long lasting. So percentage wise, if I say uh, 90 to 95 to 98 percent. Definitely, they are will be benefited in the surgical intervention. Okay, so now you, we understood that for hyperhidrosis, treatment line is surgery. What yes. kind of surgery you do? So, what is exactly surgery name is? Okay. How you perform? Yeah, well, so this surgery is called endoscopic thoracic center. So, where see, as I told you earlier, this uh, excessive sweating is basically because of uh, the overactive. Uh, reflex symptoms. So here the sympathetic chain which are connected from the brain and to the entire body, they tend to overactive and they create all this non uh, nuisance excessive sweating. Though it is a normal phenomenon, but in few people it is excessively you know overactive. So here we do the targeted target uh, surgery means so we uh, go through a small incision near your axilla and through the camera videoscope we divide the nerves which are supplying to the uh, arms and uh, axilla and face but it is only a sympathetic chain we are going to divide we are not going to uh, this, uh, 
the motor sensory or any uh, sensory uh, nerves so that will be spared completely and it will be targeted only to the sympathetic chain from which the instantaneously immediately they feel better because they won't be sweating as a, because this is a, the taking out of the anatomical structure the result will be instant here i know i know people have like you know when i explain this people do get scared because it is a removal of some nerves and all those yeah, things yeah sensation may go yeah, or exactly. some motor function and all it will affect so as a layman i'm asking obviously, this obviously obviously yeah. obviously but uh, we are making sure those nerves are in injured and it is only the targeted nerves which are supposed to be removed which will be removed and it will be beneficial Then so there is no big cuts and all that yeah well yeah so this is another thing people are where do we put incision because all young people are coming up with problems yeah. they do think about any mark will remain in the body that is the reason exactly so where what how do we do it so these incisions will be around 3 mm so i, I think you can imagine 3 mm yeah. is quite small and all the laparoscopic surgery we do the such small incision so this will be placed in near your axilla there is no you know much of marks and which is going to be created so there will be two small cuts one camera will be introduced the other one will be working instrument from there we take out the do the surgery and take out the mark so marks hardly seen because even if it is there the small cut which will be hidden under your axilla so i think we don't need to people won't need to Uh, worry about this scars and things like that. So kind of major surgery or something like that, sir. Means half an hour, one hour surgery or something. Well, uh, per se, if you ask me about the surgical time, it is going to be around twenty uh, to thirty minutes. So, but uh, overall time, like you know, anesthesia, pre-op, uh, this thing, say around one to two hours. So immediately, patient will be awake as soon as surgery gets over. He will be monitored in recovery room for around 45 minutes. Then he will be shifted back to ward within a bit of time and uh, six hours of fasting, and he can get back to routine diet and uh, activity. Okay, sir. So, uh, after the surgery, is there any complications? Patient will worry about after the surgery uh, any side effects. Uh, that can you can you explain, sir? Yeah, well, this is obviously people the moment they. I want to undergo surgery. The next question comes: Is there any side effect? Is there any complication? Well, obviously, whenever we do the surgery, some risk will be there. But these are very limited in the sense: the post-op, immediate post-op, uh, they will be some minimal chest pain and discomfort that can be easily tackled with the IV medication and oral medication, some instant spirometer and steam inhalation. So they will be benefited. Uh, in, uh, by this, and it is not going to be a long lasting, and it can be managed without any major intervention with the basic medication. It will go away, and uh, I don't see any much of uh, major complication uh, apart from see other thing. These uh, the anesthesia risk. So this most of the guys who come with you not know, suffer are the young crowd, like you know, say around twenties to thirty, thirty-five, forty people. So uh, they will be fit and fine. So in such cases, these even anesthesia risk nowadays is very much you know rare. I don't think anything major to worry. So these are the only few things I observe uh, from my post operations. Oh, you are telling there will be no complications or side effects. Yeah. Which will be a safe surgery. Safe surgery, definitely. Okay. okay, sir. Knowing all these things. suppose patient want to reach out to you how they yeah, can just hang on one more thing there are uh, in the media there i have seen recently people are asking about this compensatory sweating yes. so uh, well i wanted to tell you about this because uh, we do see some something like this compensatory sweating but it is it is happening in the uh, post uh, surgery in a very rare like you know i have seen like Out of my 80 patient, probably one or two guys have told me that they have some increased sweating in the back and the uh, uh, foot region. So, which can be managed because, see, basically, as I told earlier, these hyperacusis, though it can affect your palms and plantar region, that is foot. So, the problem people suffer because of plantar, I mean, sorry, the palm region, that is hand and the armpit and face. This uh, foot sweating can be managed by using 
some socks and all those things. So they are not exposed area. So exposed area, if you have this sweating, you will end up in trouble. So though there are some claims that you know because of this compensatory sweating may happen, but uh, so this is very small now in number. So even if it happens, we can try with medical management and some sort of uh, uh, aluminum chloride lotions and ointments. So this is one thing I wanted to highlight because uh, this is routinely asked question. Like you know, it is running in um, in the media and all. But I can assure you that it is it can be tackled. It is not a major one. And believe it or not, the uh, <coughs> this as it is a reflex phenomenon. So once you have once you gain the confidence in like you know there is no sweating in your hands, automatically you develop that confidence. So through this your reflex activity also will come down. So there is a high chance that you know where they sweat less and less day by day. So this is what the, one of the complication which is you know uh, so I wanted to highlight. Just I remember one question sir actually. For hand and legs, same time you will do the surgery, sir, or separately you will do, or whether for surgery for hand, what you are doing, it will affect yeah. to legs also, or something like that. Yeah, sir? well, I mean, uh, see, they, uh, as I told earlier, this uh, sympathetic chains which are separate to hand and the foot are different, totally different. Yes, sir. So, in the foot, what happens is these nerves, chains, sympathetic chains, which are very closely. Uh, placed with nerves which are supplied to your uh, bladder control, genital urinary areas and uh, uh, rectal these control, these are placed very adjacent. So we generally don't do these surgeries to the foot areas because there is a chance they are getting injured to the these bladder, the control of the bladder, these things can be affected. So this is not required. Because we, once we do the surgery for your hands and arms, so as I told, reflex by reflex phenomenon, they will gain the confidence and they will tend to reduce the sweating between the hands and I'm sorry, foot. So this is what I was uh, wanted to highlight. Okay. Yeah. We will not do surgery for legs. Not separate. required. Not required. Okay. Only thing is the more fake focus area is to control the sweating in your palms, axilla, and face. That's where those are the exposed part and you know. Yeah, you will be benefited. Though there is some claim that some people do sweat in the uh, foot region, it can be managed conservatively. And uh, the, as soon as we do the surgery, they get can control and the sympathetic chain will take over and it will reduce. Any yes, particular age group you will do surgery for? Like 14 years, 15 years? Uh, with, with these complaints, if they come to your OPD, will you uh, refer surgery immediately for them or? Based on their age, you will. Well, we can give a medical management initially, but that being told, obviously, uh, if the guy who is in the pediatric case, because the parents won't be agreeing, that is what it is a scary thing. But uh, once you are like, you know, probably like, you know, plus 18, and, you know, or, and uh, the working age, like, you know, up to 50, 60. You can do the surgery. There is no yes, bar, age bar for that. Yes, suddenly I remember that question. Yeah. You used to get uh, patient on the yeah. Though the media, these guys are troubled since a childhood, but uh, it is, uh, we can go ahead and do the surgery even in the pediatric group, but we always wait till 18 and then do the surgery. Uh, so there's one question uh, yeah. from the audience. Uh, so Tejas Kumar wants to know if. Uh, a particular age group is more prone to this uh, uh, condition. Yeah, well, this is most most of the time. It is a sort of uh, they will they do have these issues in childhood only. But when the, these guys won't be aware of this because the young crowd in any pediatric age group, they are not much of aware. The problem, as I told, I, was, I kept on stressing this point because once you start working, the so social interaction. That is the age group where they realize that they have a lot of sweating and you know. Otherwise in school going age, I don't think they'll be even bothered about it. Though they play, they sweat a lot. So that's not the problem. More than the, uh, this uh, sweating, the social withdrawal, hesitation to go ahead with the interact with other people. All those things will start around uh, once you finish your, uh, once you graduate. So once you start working, you'll realize the, you know, the pain of it. So that's the age we most of the people come to us and get the surgery done. 
So this is what uh, we should digest. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, knowing all these things, it, it was very interactive session, so we got to know about more about hyperhidrosis. And uh, is there any testimonials, sir? Because more of patients, they will be not knowing like these surgeries are there actually. Doctors are available for this problem. Is there any testimonials where we can find out uh, more details about these surgeries? Well, uh, we have a lot of uh, patients. So those who are willing to you know, offer or talk to you, we will definitely they can talk to our patients. Uh, some people don't want to reveal this, so we don't want to trouble them. But there are a lot of surgeries we have done. Some guys are very much happy and they want to tell others because you know, this problem should not remain as a problem. It has to reach out to the public community and they should get benefit out of it. So there are guys, I think uh, we have some uh, links and on the YouTube or the Facebook, we have a lot of our testimonials and uh, reviews. You can go through that. If you want to, you can have, uh, I think, uh, Nagratma is our department coordinator. She can get you through the, uh, like some other guy's number. You can directly talk to them. If you want to, you can meet them. However, it can be done. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. And yeah. one more thing. Now we, uh, just for the information about hyperacusis, everything. Now we want to consult you. What are okay. your timings? So yeah. You are available on the day. So, yes. We are, I am here uh, uh, throughout the week to, uh, from 9 o'clock to uh, 5 o'clock. So, except Sunday, that's a holiday, we operate only emergency surgeries. So, uh, rest of the day I am available. You can contact the uh, hospital, ask the army hospital, or you can uh, ring up Nagratna and fix an appointment. So, what, does, what do we do? Once we, once I cons I mean, once we consult, so uh, we have to assess you because uh, as I told, the secondary uh, hyperhidrosis, most of the time it will be due to thyroid problem. So we have to screen you for thyroid and uh, diabetes, some underlying malignancy. Once you do a physical examination, if you are fit, if you are like, you know, fit into this category, then we will get you screened by the anesthetist. They will examine you and uh, some blood work before the surgery. And once all through, then we will be uh, fit for surgery and uh, surgical per se it is a daycare procedure. So suppose yeah, that's what, that was yeah. my personal question actually sir. How no. many days the patient to stay no, in it, the hospital? It's a daycare procedure. So it is, uh, a, so suppose patient comes in the early morning, we do the surgery around 10 o'clock and by evening patient will be fine. But just, you know, just to safety sake, we keep them for overnight and monitor till next day. And then once they are okay, we will discharge them. So this is the, about the so, hospital course, I want you to tell you. Okay, sir. sir, thank you so much for your valuable yes. insights, sir. And thank you for your time. And uh, for next visit, for any with different topic, we'll contact Dr. Shiv Prasad. Thank and you, FB Live. Thank you, everyone. Whoever watching this FB Live, I just wanted to inform you all. Whoever suffering from this hyperhidrosis problem, excessive sweating, you want to consult Dr. Shiv Prasad. Kindly contact. Aster Army Hospital, JP Nagar, Bangalore. The contact number is 080-660-40400. And I am coordinator for General and GS Surgery and for Dr. Shiva Prasad. You want me to contact directly, please dial 89519-05429. Thank you everyone. Until next time, signing off Mandarin. Thank you.